Hello Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'm here with our 12.17 low ELO tier list. Our regular tier list, in which we post with the patch rundown and the mid-patch update, is aimed at around a high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously, any tier list is a little bit nuanced, but in general, this one is a great way to know what champions to pick and which one to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. And one last thing before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check these guys out. They're all top level players, and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the solo queue wall alone, and head over for some professional help now. Anyway, let's get on with the guide. First, we'll start with the top laners. York has been on a slow and steady climb up the ranks over the past few patches, and now he's doing well enough that we're moving him up to the OP tier. His perma-splitting playstyle is a simple but solid tactic for carrying games, especially in lower elos. It's pretty common for players here to ignore the big side lane threat like Yorick until it's way too late. By the time they send somebody to stop you, you'll probably already be strong enough to take on two or even more foes. But ignoring you at this point isn't exactly a winning formula for them either, since you'll take their base in no time at all when left alone. Nasus is being demoted to the A tier. He's still a solid enough pick, but he's a bit too matchup dependent to put him up any higher than this. If you want a hard carry games, you need to be against a foe that you can safely farm against. Orn also gets brought down to the A tier. Again, he's a solid enough pick with a solid laning, but he isn't a champion that can hard carry games if the rest of your team is doing poorly. Still, I'd like to definitely recommend him if you're the type of player that likes to enable the rest of the team to do the heavy lifting. Maokai is getting a pretty big list of changes this patch, so it's pretty hard to say exactly how good he'll be. The key point is that they're adding percent based damage to his Q, which is his primary trading tool, so he should definitely be at least better than he currently is. For now, we'll put him in the A tier, but this is definitely subject to change, so be sure to check in next time to see how he's doing once we have some info to go off of. Aatrox moves up to the B tier. This means that he's basically a pretty mediocre pick. If you snowball hard, you just have a lot of carrying power in the mid game, but the problem is a lot of lower elo games drag out for quite a long time. He falls off as the game goes on, so that's definitely a big con down here. We really thought Udyr's high numbers would make him at least pretty good, if not straight up broken, but it turns out we really overestimated how well he'd do. He's at least stabilized a bit over the course of 12.16, bringing up his abysmal win rate from about 40% up to the upper 40s. But still, that's pretty bad, so we're putting him in the C tier. Vladimir gets demoted to the C tier. In the mid lane, the shorter length of the lane makes Vladimir's weak early game a lot harder to punish. You're pretty much always just able to pull out and just run back to the turret. But the longer top lane leaves him in very vulnerable all-ins. You could actually end up so behind that you don't even really get a chance to scale. We'll be moving Salas down to the C tier. He was previously in the B tier as a situational pick, but honestly, even in the best scenarios right now, he's just not going to be worth picking. There's always pretty much another pick that could have more of an impact with an easy lane. Yone is also being knocked down to the C tier. He's a really strong champion if you reach 3 items, but pretty much every meta top laner will bully you so hard that you never really get a chance to hit that spike. Since he's a carry with no real utility, once you're behind, you're entirely useless. Karma drops down to the D tier. In theory, Karma top sounds pretty good. Bully lane with her strong early game, and then transition to a support for team fights. But even in high elo, she's doing really bad. In lower elo, giving up a carry slot to play an enchanter means that you're putting full faith in players that you probably don't want to trust your LP to. Riven will also be demoted to our lowest tier. Objectively speaking, even when played super well, she's not so good right now. She's always done better the higher in rank you go, so that means she's especially terrible in silver and under at the moment. Now for the jungle, here's our list. We'll be moving Scion up to the OP tier here. Like we talked about before with top lane Scion, if you just take his win rate at face value, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. But we're excluding the Prowler's build from our placement. Lethality Scion is awful, and really tanks his stats. When you actually build him the right way with Sunfire Aegis, Scion wins almost 54% of the time. The nerf trundle is getting this patch is by no means going to kill him. He's still going to check off all the same boxes, OP dueling, good ganks, and a very strong ultimate for shredding through beefy tanks and juggernauts, but he'll be a lot less capable of straight up 1v90, since he heavily relies on having his W up to sick 2 and even beat down enemy champions. We'll be moving Fiddle 6 up to the S tier. With a super quick and healthy clear time, Fiddle 6 is super safe early on. No one can ever just walk into your jungle and start bullying you. The only downside is that he has little to no presence for ganking lanes in the first few levels, but trust me, once you have his ultimate, you can more than make up for it. Post 6, his ganks are basically guaranteed kills, but he really shines in team fights. Once you have level 11 and 2 or more items, a well-timed fiddle R can set your team up to completely mop the floor with your foes. Diana has been moved down to the S tier. 
she still has a lot of carry potential and can easily solo take over games if you can get ahead early with her. Being in the S tier means that she's just slightly less consistent or overbearing as the champions that are one notch higher. Hecarim is getting a pretty big change up this patch. The TLDR is that they're taking away some of his CC and upfront damage, and making him more about his damage over time in longer fights. Full tank Hecarim won't be much of an issue, but now he'll turn into a massive damage threat if he's ahead. All of that being said, as with Maokai, it's pretty hard to say where he'll actually end up on the tier list without some more information, so for now, we'll be putting him in the B tier. Like with Udyr Top, we were wrong about how good he'd be in the jungle, so we're demoting him down to the C tier. There's just not really a way to justify him over the other tank picks. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Ram moves up to the S tier this patch. His laning is pretty obnoxious for anyone to deal with. His W and E give a ton of poke, with his Q being an easy disengage on any opponent that tries to close the gap. Post 6, Brand gets super deadly all-in potential. Ever since they made it so that his ult bounces off of himself, he's been able to pretty much 100-0 any foe that tries to get too close. But what you really want to do with Brand is look for team fights. The more enemy champions in a team fight, the more targets you have to spread your blaze to, and the higher damage potential that you have for some massive explosions. Diana drops down to the S tier. This one is pretty surprising. They buffed AP Diana with her 12.16 changes, so we thought she would for sure be an insanely broken pick, but she's just not overperforming like we expected. Annie gets emoted down to the A tier. With her easy to use kit and solid laning, Annie really does get consistent results. It's just that she's limited on how hard she can carry a losing team. With flash up, you can pretty much guarantee a kill on a high priority target, which is great when your team is ahead or the game is close. But when playing off the back foot, she just doesn't have the backpacking strength to make her an S tier anymore. Xeroth also gets moved down to the A tier. Like Annie, he's just really good at getting consistent results, but those results are limited since he can't just really hard stop games enough as a champion that is focused on simply poking down foes. Zed gets promoted to the B tier, and he's almost doing well enough to make him an A tier. He's a viable pick, but definitely not the best option for hard carrying games as a blind pick. Auction gets emoted down to the B tier this patch. He's an okay pick overall, but needs to snowball pretty hard to be useful, and that's pretty tough against most of the current meta picks. Yone is being moved down to the B tier. If he can scale up, he's a really strong carry, but his lack of an early game presence makes him kind of a coin flippy pick. Azir gets moved down to the D tier. He's a classic example of a champion that does way better in pro play than in solo queue. Anytime he pops up on the big stage as a meta pick, Riot is quick to nerf him, and the result is him being basically a troll pick in low elo. He loses lane, takes too long to scale, and even if you make it to the super late game, other champions are way easier to execute. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. With her getting yet another round of nerfs, we'll finally be moving Sivir down to the S tier. We think she's still going to be plenty strong and easy to play, but just a bit less overbearing as she was before. Trisana moves up to the S tier. We underestimated how good she is after her buff's last patch. She's snowballing more consistently, and once she has the lead, she's able to do more with it. What I personally like about Trisana is that she allows you to go super aggressive early, but also have really good scaling for the late game insurance, so you don't feel like you're going to be playing on a timer. And with her high range and mobility, she's also super self-sufficient. Lucian gets emoted down to the C tier. He's a classic win hard and fast type of champion, but right now, he's just not in a great spot. Just winning 2v2s is pretty tough in the current meta, and even when you do, he quickly falls off compared to the other strong picks in the role. To finish things off, we have our supports. Leona moves up all the way to the OP tier. We've had Leona in the lower tiers for quite a while now, but something we fail to look at is how different item choices affect her. When you build her with the even shroud, her win rate shoots way up. So, using our same logic as we do with Scion after we talked about Sunfire versus Prattler's Claw, we think that she deserves to be in our highest tier. We're moving Shaco down a notch to the S tier. Overall, he's still a really good pick, but we think that he only truly puts on an OP tier performance when playing against a really engaged heavy team comp. Zillian moves down to the A tier. He's a pretty decent option for his scaling support, but since he's so focused on enabling a single ally, he gets outshone by more team-centric picks like Sona and Janet in that department. The last adjustment that we have for today is moving Rel up to the A tier. As with Leona, Rel is another champion that sees a huge improvement in her performance when you build Even Shroud over Solari. That being said, even with her very best build, she can't compete with Leona's well-roundedness as an engaged support. Rel only really shines well when she can play against teams that have a lot of dive. In other games, she's just a slightly above average pick. And that about wraps things up for our 12.17 low elo tier list. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Since making this list involves going over all the champions and all the roles, I'm sure we may have overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss things further or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.